much everyone and I'd certainly like to start by acknowledging the traditional owners, the Ngunnawal people, and also to say that the Greens strongly support the move by Indigenous people to have the date for Australia Day changed to recognise the reconciliation. <laughs> we are at a pivotal moment in the Earth's history. It's a critical moment for humanity and the diversity of life on Earth as we know it at this particular time. It's a rare thing where one generation of people, people who are on Earth right now, have within their power in the next decade to change the way life is going to be for every other person and every other species on this Earth henceforth. I think it's fantastic that you are all here from the grassroots movement around Australia, from communities everywhere, recognising that in those communities, people are saying, this is it, we have to do something. What are we going to do? And coming together, bringing that local perspective, local action, coming together and translating it into a national grassroots movement is just fantastic. It is the best thing that has happened for the climate campaign in this country. So yeah. give yourselves a great big The first one is from Einstein, when he said, the significant problems we face cannot be solved at the same level of thinking we were at when we created them. Now that is exactly the scenario we have at the moment with the Carbon Pollution Reduction Scheme. It's the same level of thinking as the people who created them are coming up with the solutions. And they've got it wrong. They have got it wrong. And so that's the thing. The 5% target is absolutely woeful. It's humiliating at a global level, but it is the moral imperative that is so important that 5% is, is undermining the future well-being of everybody on the planet. And as such, it is shameful. Absolutely shameful. The, uh, the idea, if ever you wanted an idea to show that the people who created the problems are now coming up with the same solutions at the same level of thinking, is Kevin Rudd's second stimulus package where he wants to help developers to build more shopping centres so people can buy more stuff, more unsustainably, and generate exactly the same problems we've got now. So that is exactly where we don't want to go, where the opportunity, it is such an opportunity cost when you see $10 billion just frittered away on things that people don't really need, that are started on a massive shift in public transport, a big investment in uh, renewable energy and energy efficiency. If they had moved to get people out of logging native forests, get people to stop clearing native vegetation, we would have actually got something for the $10 billion. But here we are, amongst <laughs> Just transition. The CSIRO came to see me last year at my request to talk about green jobs. And they've identified a huge gap where the green jobs are there and we don't have the people to do them. And so I said, have you done an audit of the jobs in the La Trobe Valley and the Hunter Valley as they currently stand and tried to match that skill set with the gap that we know exists with a view to actually starting to help communities make that shift? And they said, we've got the technical capability of doing it, but we haven't done it because we haven't been asked to do it by our political masters. Ooh. So this is a big challenge. Liberal and Labor are the politics of the old order, they're the politics of the industrial age. One is the politics of capital, the other is the politics of Labor, which has now become the politics of capital as well. So they are the same. They are the same. And whatever they come up with is always in that framework, and we have got to get beyond it. So just as we need a new level of thinking about the way we address politics, we need a new politics. Again, and that is fundamentally because, in their view, Australia's future is as a quarry. We dig things up, we cut them down, and we ship them overseas, and we despair when people don't want our coal, don't want our iron ore, and then we go into a state of depression instead of realising that is not that is not the way we want, want to go forward. We do not want to be the world's quarry. 
It's time to get a lot cleverer than that and make the transition. And that has been a big The second point I want to make, the second quote that you might want to put on your fridge is about courage. And this is where it's up to all of us to get more courageous. And that's why your resolutions this weekend in relation to the carbon pollution reduction scheme and the 300 parts per million target is important in showing real courage. And this is from Machiavelli, and it is, there's nothing more difficult to handle, more doubtful of success, and more dangerous to carry through than initiating change. The innovator makes enemies of all those who prosper under the old border, and only lukewarm support is forthcoming from those who would prosper under the new. Their support is lukewarm partly from fear of their adversaries, who have existing laws on their side, and partly because men are generally incredulous, never really trusting new things unless they have tested them by experience. And that was the, the men thing is 15, 14, so we'll, we'll forgive him for that. <laughs> the point I want to make here is, we know who the best interests are, and in this country it's the big end of town, it's the resource-based industries, it's the loggers, the miners, the coal sector, and so on. They are the vested interest, they know what's at stake, they know they're on the way out, just like the tobacco industry did, and they will fight the last with the political parties that represent them. It's the new order I want to talk about. It's to say congratulations to all those young people, still wild, still threatened out of the Florentine and Tasmania. <laughs> against the vested interests, they know how hard it is and they're prepared to put themselves on the line because that is the only way we are going to save those forests in the face of a political system that hasn't changed. We have to do the same with renewables and efficiency. We have to get as radical as they are in terms of making this transition because if you're going to get systemic change, it has, it has to be um, that strong. Um, and then, so that's the issue about courage, and it's not just about Copenhagen. This year, it's about the 2010 election. It's about new politics and radical change and not voting for political parties that do not recognise the climate and peak oil crisis requires a new way of thinking. Now, is it too late? Are we sitting home thinking we're doing all this, but have we reached the threshold? Are we beyond where we can deal with it. There's a lot of grieving, there's a lot of sadness, and we must do what we conceive to be the right thing and not bother our heads or burden our souls with whether or not we'll be successful. Because if we don't do the right thing, then we'll be doing the wrong thing. We'll be part of the disease, not part of the cure. And so all of you are here today saying you are not bothering your heads and burdening your souls about whether the 300 is going to be achieved. You know that moving towards the kinds of reduction that give us a sustainable future is the right thing to do and you want to be part of the cure. And so I congratulate you absolutely for that. It is incredibly important that we have this grassroots campaign across the country. You will radicalise the mainstream environment movement. That is so essential and we will radicalise the political system and be your voice in the political process. So my message today is have courage, know that you are right in insisting that we need systemic change. This is not the time for fiddling around the edges for the odd rebate, for the odd solar panel, for the odd anything. This is the time when we either radically change how we live, what we do, how we govern ourselves, how we generate our energy, how we respect the planet, how we save our forests and create jobs in rest or restoring biodiversity around the planet instead of destroying it. This is the time for radical change and let me tell you, there have been radical changes in the past. No one thought the Berlin Wall would come down when it did and it came down because of a grassroots movement. The Orange Revolution in the Ukraine more recently, again, a grassroots movement conducted on the internet overthrew everything. This is achievable in this country and it will be achievable from the grassroots. So thank you for what you're doing. Please stay in touch with us. Let's get better coordinated so that we in the Senate and in the Parliament can represent you better, but together, we will bring about change. We will bring down this stone wall that we've currently got. 
with Liberal and Labor on climate change, and we can dream about an entirely different sustainable future. Thank you.